Hi, this is Harold Long. Welcome to the Hill Tran United Weekly Message and Podcast. I'm glad you're making time for this week's teaching. I will have more to say at the end, but for now, let's dive right in. I'm going to invite everybody to stand. We're going to read the Gospel of Luke. This morning, we're going to be reading from the Message Bible. If you're not familiar with the Message Bible, it's a Bible that came out in the early 2000s by Eugene Peterson. It's just really modern day language and easier to I think, unpack sometimes in our culture, so I use it a lot. Um, And so that's what we're going to read from this morning. This morning is about a boy, Jesus, in a temple, and he gets left behind by his parents, and we're going to read about that. Then we're going to uh, have a bumper video titled, I Call You Mom, and then we're going to have three of our sisters here that are going to come up and give our message today through a QA and a exchange that I will lead. And... uh, and I haven't set them up. Susie asked me to go, did you, did you get, give these guys the, the, the questions ahead of time? I said, absolutely not. They'll get them. They're going to be called right on the spot. No, they got the questions ahead of time. Had ch- plenty of time to pray and reflect what they're going to uh, share with us today. So let's read this gospel. I'll read it for us. Every year, Jesus' parents traveled to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up, as they always did, for the feast. When it was over and they left for home, the child Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents didn't know it. Thinking he was somewhere in the company of pilgrims, they journeyed for a whole day and then began looking for him among relatives and neighbors. When they didn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem looking for him. The next day they found him in the temple, seated among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. The teachers were all quite taken with him, impressed with the sharpness of his answers. But his parents were not so impressed. They were upset and hurt. His mother said, young man, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been half out of our minds looking for you. He said, why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that I had to be here dealing with the things of my father? But they had no idea what he was talking about. So he went back to Nazareth with them and lived obediently with them. His mother held these things dearly, deep within herself. As Jesus matured growing up in both body and spirit, blessed by both God and people. May God bless your hearing, your understanding, and application of scripture. You may be seated. Amen. Some call you Mama. Some call you Mommy. Some call you the most smartest. Some call you so funny. Some call you homework helper. Some call you higher, higher. Some call you their hero and also their taxi driver. Some call you Nana or Abuela or Mima. Some call you Mother. Please stop spoiling them all. Some call you a mentor. Some call you a friend. Some call you God's kindness for the mother they never had. Some call you from the beginning. Some call you much later. Some call you guardian or foster parent on paper. But paper never stopped you from showing up open-handed. You were no less the mother and the love God intended. Some call you joy, some call you graceful, some call you strength, some call you faithful, some call you constant, some call you care, some call you always, some call you there. Some call you the greatest, some call you the bomb. 
but I, I call you blessed. I call you mom. Today is titled Preach Mom Mum, depending on where you're coming from. But uh, I've asked three sisters to come and share with us today a series of questions that, one, the first one relates to our scripture, and uh, to kick us off and to just share for a few minutes each on the questions that we have at hand for our message today. So we'll ask you to, you know, keep it in and in in, in be conscious of time. If you would go over time, there's a trap door below your chair. You will fall through the floor. John and Mark could put mayor mattresses down there. Hopefully they're thick enough to break the fall for you. But uh, no, we're excited that you're here. I love each and every one of you, you know that. And I'm, and I'm um, excited to hear what you have to teach us, but also to share from your heart uh, about these questions. So here's first question. And uh, Monica, we'll start with you since you're right in the middle. What does our scripture reading, Luke chapter 2, 41 through 52, teach us about parenting, especially motherhood? Well, first of all, um, it's going to be difficult after that beautiful um, video we just watched to not choke up. That was so pretty. Um, and also, I'm not used to speaking, I'm used to singing, so Chris and I might sing our responses, and, uh, and she's going to sing harmony to make me sound better. <laughs> but seriously, um, I, this is just my personal thing. Whenever I read scripture about Mary, I feel very, um, like, not a good mom. <laughs> She was the ultimate mom, and how do we live up to that? Um, but really, she was just living um, her faith and following um, her heart and what God put, uh, you know, gave her to do. Um, I think the uh, situation practically is um, we learn about patience and trust. Um, as a mother you have to have patience and trust. You have to love. Um, I love the scripture from Corinthians that love is patient, love is kind. But it starts with love. Um, so I, that's what popped out to me in that situation. Well, just to piggyback on what you said, I'm going to sing it. <laughs> um, no, but uh, everything that she said, and to add to that, I think that as a mom, I started to understand when my, when my mom, when I was young, and my mom would say, you know, this is going to hurt me way more than it hurts you. Whatever it was, the grounding, you know, whatever. Um, I get that because when you love someone so much, but that you have no control over what they're doing, all you can really do is, is just pray that they eventually make it make their way to it and just know that what you're doing in the meantime is setting them hopefully on the right path and uh, teaching them their morals and values um, and living that Christ-centered life. Mm -hmm. So, your turn. <laughs> um, well, I kind of looked at it a little differently as just kind of realizing that, that Mary was a mom just like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. that, um, you know, we've all had those freak out moments where we turn around and our little one isn't there and it's like, oh my gosh, where did they go? <laughs> Just like when I picked Emily up from school Friday, I was getting the two little ones in the car and situated and Lucy was riding with Emily and so she had to go turn her keys in and um, Lucy's like, can I go with you? And she's like, no, stay, just stay here, just stay here. That was the last thing I heard. I turned around and then Lucy wasn't there anymore. The back car door was still open um, there's, you know, all these other people in and out, moving their kids out, and I'm like, where did she go? <laughs> and so I assumed um, she had gone with Emily, but I wasn't sure. But fortunately, nowadays, we all have phones, so I called her, and I'm like, are you, are you with your sister? And she's like, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're in trouble. But exactly. I'm so glad I'm you're like, back, but now yeah, you're in trouble. Thanks for letting me know. Um, <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, yeah, so, I mean, I just lived a 
you did similar that. situation. That <laughs> yeah, for real. But yeah, I mean, it's scary. Yes, it <laughs> how is. quickly you can turn around and they're not there. Or they're hiding in the in the in thing the in the rack. in the clothes yes. rack. <laughs> and then and then when they come out of the clothes rack, they all go. Yes, that happened to me, and we scooted out. <laughs> Our next question, getting a little bit deeper and more personal in the weeds, and we'll start with uh, we'll start with Kim. What have been your greatest challenges, or your greatest challenge as a mother, and what spiritual principles have you had to practice to meet this challenge? I guess to piggyback off of after my first answer is just fear and just having to um, faith over fear. Mm. Um, when Jake was little, we had a scare with him, and I still to this day can hear him. Anytime I start to like freak out or worry, I hear my mom tell me fear does not come from God. And so that's just one of those things that is always, always there. <laughs> Never, and then just away. be still. Um, a lot of times, you know, whenever I start to get worked up or the kids are driving me crazy or um, just be still, take a breath, <laughs> say a prayer, <laughs> yep. and, and move on. Um, I think my greatest challenge has been when they have moved out. Um, I'm one of those that would let them, wish them to live with me forever. And my husband's like, no way, <laughs> get out. <laughs> um, you know, i happy for them to be able to move out and that's what they're supposed to do. But I just, um, you know, there's, there's such a joy to have. Um, and, but really the, the other thing has been them drifting away from church. And I know that we have given them a good foundation, but I really, uh, I struggle with that. I struggle with that because I, you know, you want them to be and have the same um, relationship with Christ. And uh, I just, I struggle with that. And so I pray a lot. <laughs> uh, I would say probably one of my biggest challenges is uh, letting go and letting God and a great example is just um, I'm trying to understand myself that not everybody thinks the way that I think right and and of course I'm right when I think it so um, so and the fact that um, that God I think going through I'm a better mom now, of course, than I was when I was a young. I was 19 when I had my first baby, and um, and I was always the best mom that I could be, as we all try to be. But being a Christian mom has made me an even better, stronger mom. And teaching my children that, and I've always been more of the glasses half full, a pause on the positive side. But I've learned to, when I'm walking and I see a dandelion coming out of the crack of a sidewalk, I'm just like, oh, thank you, God. Like, it's just, a, or a cardinal flies in front of me. It's like, hello, you know, like I know, just trying to have them always make lemonade out of lemons to see the positive thing and letting them, teaching them now as, as adults that um, you're not driving the boat. Mm -hmm. God is, I'm not even driving the boat. <laughs> Dad's not driving the boat, God is driving the boat and uh, if, if you let go and you trust whatever that real core inner thing is telling you, you know that you can't go wrong because God is the one steering you. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, Chrissy, why don't we stay with you and we'll hit this question. <laughs> what lessons and blessings from your mother have you incorporated in raising your own children? Well, to piggyback on what I just said, the positive, my mother is... <laughs> the kindest, truly kindest. She does not come to church, but she believes in God. And she lives the most Christ-centered life of anybody that I know. She loves everybody, Ever, even the ones that 
you wouldn't want to love, but you still should. <laughs> um, she loves the least of these. And um, I think that's where hopefully I have gotten some of that from her. Um, blessings from your mother incorporate. Yeah. Um, I've told my children their whole lives, I don't care how successful you become, you just have to be a kind human. Kindness. Um, I have learned a lot about, uh, from my mother, and I just have to um, say that my mother is the best mother and the kindest person as well. Um, my mother has not only walked her faith, um, and she demonstrates her faith by the way she lives. And I feel like um, I have tried to incorporate that into my life and into raising my children. Um, it's been a blessing to have my mother uh, walk alongside me my whole life and to to be that patient person to put up with some of my shenanigans from when I was younger. <laughs> and, and just to always be encouraging and just, you know, being that rock of our family. Um, and just, uh, just showing her faith and walking her faith. Um, and I've tried to incorporate that as into my children um, just being the person, showing the person that I want them to be by being that person. Does that make sense? Um, you have to be the person you want your children to be. Not tell them, because the do as I say, not as I do, doesn't work. <laughs> They're going to do. <laughs> They're going to model your behavior. So if you, um, if you want them to, to be a certain behavior, you need to uh, model that. Listed and online, and you don't, you, you may or may not know, but Monica's mother's here. And if you don't, if you're in line and here and you don't know who she is, if you didn't pick up on the eye contact, she's sitting right over here to my right, hanging right here in his Charlotte. So wave your hand, sir, so everybody can see you. There she is. <laughs> Greatest mom on the planet right there in, in, is in a presence with us. Awesome. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, well, I guess. We were raised by similar women because I, my mom always taught me to kill them with kindness. Oh, yeah. um, so any, any issue I had with mean girls or whatever the case may be, it was kill them with kindness. And I'd have to say it always worked. Um, <laughs> the other one was if you can't see anything nice, don't see anything yes, at all. Yes. And so We were raised um, by similar moms. Yes, yes. <laughs> I don't necessarily like the taste of blood when I bite my own tongue, but <laughs> I, I do it often because I don't always have nice things to say. But <laughs> this next question is uh, one that's really relative for a lot of moms in the world today. And what, what message do you have for new and future mothers, especially raising children in a polarized Amid ever expanding secular culture. Mm. Who wants to go first? I'll go. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, going off the last question to this question, too, uh, I, my mother has shown such love that I have known for my whole life that I was loved. It didn't matter. So, I have always wanted my children to know it, there is nothing that you can do that is going to make me not love you. And so this um, kind of goes along with when people seem the least lovable, that's probably when they need the most love. And that works very well for children um, when, you know, they're throwing a temper tantrum. You might want to, what, you know, what is wrong with you? Wait till we get to the car. Give them a little shake. But, but in reality, what really works, and you learn it more with your grandkids, unfortunately, is when you get down to their level, and you just say, come give me a hug. Come on, it's okay. Let them know that they're loved and they're safe. And that's it. Amen. For the last one, I've learned that more so with my last one too, with Ruby. You can't, she doesn't respond to 
being yelled at or to any of that, but if you get down to her and talk to her and just give her a hug, um, that's what diffuses the situation. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So. I go back to patience. Um, you just, you have to be patient um, and, you know, do sometimes count to 10. <laughs> um, or phone a friend. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and I, I tried to instill in, in our children that the, um, you know, the treat others the way you want to be treated. And I've even said to them, you know, how would you feel if you were in that situation and somebody was treating you that way? Um, you know, to, to be selfless, that you're, you're not always going to be in situations where you're doing things that are fun, but, um, you know, you're, you're learning. You're living your life and you're learning the lessons. Um, and to always, you know, I want them to, to live that Christ-centered life. But you can't make them. <laughs> All you can do is, is provide the opportunity um, for, for that relationship to happen. So um, I would say just you got to love them, love them, love them. Amen. <laughs> Kim, do you have any more, you want to add anything to that? I don't think so. I think they covered it. <laughs> All right. That's, yeah. I All mean, right. learn to like coffee if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Lots of coffee. <laughs> it helps. Uh, I right. still tell people I'm not old enough to drink coffee. So. <laughs> well, here's our bonus question as we close out. This one's for fun. And, uh, and, uh, and so we'll, we'll, st we'll start with Monica in the middle. We started with her. We'll start with her. Have you ever said to yourself, I'm turning into my mother? And, and if how so? Or maybe it's your husband tells you, et cetera. Um, yes, I, I have. I think we've all, in, like my siblings, agreed that I am turning into my mother in good ways only. Um, she, I hope that I imitate uh, the, the wonderful faith and trust that she has that has become my own faith, but um, in our family growing up, there was always a song for a saying that somebody would say, and my mother would sing it. So, of course, I can't think of any situation right now, but she, somebody would say something and she'd say, start singing. And I think I've kind of picked that up too. The only thing I can think of is pig iron. <laughs> Just, you want to sing it, Mom? <laughs> sing it. Or <laughs> you always said his mother loves him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when we're driving to Oklahoma and we drive through Tulsa, I'll say, "Tell me something bad about Tulsa." But so that's what I picked up. All right. A fun thing. Good. By you, Kim? Yes, all the time. <laughs> Especially lately with Lucy, whenever I tell her that it's, it's not what she says, it's how she says it. Oh, my goodness, um, yes. I heard that one a lot, and now I am frequently saying it a lot. Um, so, <laughs> And then um, also in the mornings, whenever I'm getting my children up, I find myself singing the, the silly song that Mom always sang to David and I to get us up in the mornings and out of bed. How does it go? I'm not singing. <laughs> that's, that's their Good one. I told you from the beginning I'm well, not singing. What, what, is the, what is some of the chords? What are some of the oh, vocal, the well, lyrics? It's just, get up, get up, you sleepy head. Wake up, wake up, get out of bed. Oh, <laughs> yay! My mom never knew the correct words to songs, so then she would, it was always like kind of her own little version of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I but that. I will say, if I turn into half the mother that my mother is, um, I'll be doing pretty good. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That is true. Chrissy, take us home. Oh, my gosh. She <laughs> should have went last. Charlotte's here. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, and, I, I, again, I can only hope to be a half the mom that, that my mom has been to me. Um, I, have, I do have this weird thing, and you probably know you're going to like me after this, but... When, when people get hurt or weird stuff happens, I get this n nervous laughter. I laugh, and then I'm like, oh, you okay? I mean, it's not funny, but it is. That, you know, my mom always did. Is that from your mom? Yeah, she, and it's not because she thought it was funny. It was just the nervous thing, so we do that. Yeah. 
I, and I, again, if I can only be half the mom and show kindness and love to everyone around me that she has shown, I'll be doing good, so. Awesome. Well, let's give them a round of applause, all right? I'm going to pray for them, and then uh, the bandmates can go ahead and start making their way back up because you guys are next, and uh, we're going to sing a song. But uh, let me just pray while they're making their way back up. Lord, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for these three amazing women who uh, had the courage to get up there and, and share about motherhood both as a receiver but as a giver and, uh, and the hope that they have for the mothers of the future. Uh, it's not easy being a mom. It's not easy for those who sit here and their mom is no longer with them. Their mom is in heaven and maybe has been there for some time. And, and the same goes for grandmas and great-grandmas, just the, the lineage of women in our lives. I say it often, Lord, that there's nothing more beautiful than a woman who's walked with God for a long time. And we're in the midst and company of a lot of those women today. So we thank you for utilizing Mary the way you utilized her, for utilizing women present with us today, and, and how they make a big difference on how a lot of people's lives turns out, especially ours. And so we thank you for their demonstration. We pray your sovereign hand be over them, continue to provide them the courage and the willingness to persevere in tough times in an ever-changing world and dynamic where there's darkness on every corner coming at us 100 miles per hour, that they can remain steadfast and true to your principles in life. And so we just thank you again for their demonstration and for their willingness to share a part of their journey with us today. And we pray it, and we pray it boldly in your son's name. Amen. Hi again, this is Harold. Thanks for listening to our weekly message and podcast. I hope that we have shared something helpful to you wherever you are in your spiritual journey. Just so you know a little bit more about us, we are Hill Tran United. Hill Tran United is an alliance between Hillsboro United Methodist Church and Transformation United Methodist Church. We are kingdom churches and kingdom communities for people who aren't into church. We meet Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. at Hillsboro United Methodist Church and 11 a.m. at Transformation United Methodist Church. Both churches are located in the northeastern tip of the beautiful Ozark Mountains located in Jefferson County, Missouri. We also meet during the week in smaller groups that we call life groups and home churches, and that's how we make it relational. We hear regularly from people from all over who are engaging in personal and group studies based on our teaching, and we would love to know if that is happening where you are at. If you want to connect with us, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vimeo, and YouTube, or you can download our app from your favorite app store. To search for the app titled Our Church by Church Dev and enter in Hilltran United and you can access all of our available audio, video teachings, plus through the app you can, and our, or our website you can download our PowerPoint slides, bulletin, sermon notes, and discussion questions. It's all there for you. And lastly, if you want to learn more about how you can support Hillsboro United Methodist Church or Transformation United Methodist Church financially, please go to www.hilltran.org for more information and to give. We appreciate anything you can do to help. Hey, thanks for being a member of this extended church family. I'm glad we are in this together as kingdom people commencing shoulder to shoulder to help people rediscover life and experience the kingdom of God.